talking to you about whether or not you should buy a project car and kind of some things that you should expect if you do decide that you are ready to venture into the world of project cars. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to kind of start off with the what you should know before you buy a project car. So it's really important that you have a budget mapped out. So not only do you need to have the idea of how much you can spend in total, you need to know how much you can spend on the purchase price for your project car, how much you can spend rebuilding that car, and whether you wanna do it all at once and just have a lump sum of money and just go for it, or if you wanna do a monthly budget where you know, you're know you spending 100, 200, 300, whatever your budget is, dollars a month on your project car and slowly building it over time. Another thing that is really important is to have a realistic understanding of what your skills are. Now, are you gonna buy a project car that needs to be completely rebuilt from the frame up and the only thing you've ever done is an oil change? Probably not the best idea. Um, if you have resources though, and people that can mentor you and help you and are willing to do that, then yes, you can probably get away with getting a project car that is going to push your skills and help you grow. But like I said, you have to make sure that those people are really actually willing to help you. Otherwise, you're gonna be really frustrated because you can't figure out what's going on and sewing Jim Bob, whatever <laughs> your friend's name is. Is anyone named Jim Bob anymore? Um, whatever your friend's name is, isn't showing up for you like they said they would. So you've got a project car that just sat for three years because you got stuck and didn't want to pay someone to do it for you. That kind of stuff happens. The other thing that I wish I had considered more was do you really have a place to keep your project cars and to work on your project cars. So I have, I mean, my Instagram handle, my business name is Katie's Garage, but I don't actually have a garage. <laughs> so I have both of my project cars out in the open. I have a convertible that needs a new top and I have my black GTS Celica that has a ton of rust underneath of it. Now, is it ideal for them to be sitting outside in Washington winters? No. Did I think about that when I bought them? No. I don't have the facility here, like at my own house to do it, but I do have access to that. So just consider that and keep that in mind. The next thing that you have to ask yourself is you have the money, that's great. You have the place, that's awesome. Do you have the time and are you willing to sacrifice time with your family and your friends to build this car? Because it takes a lot of freaking time to build a project car. I was working full time at my um, accounting job and then I was coming home and spending 15 to 20 hours a weekend working on my cars. So that did not leave a whole lot of room for anything else. Um, some of you have wives and husbands or girlfriends or whatever, children, and they're not going to be very happy if they never get to see you. So it is a very big time commitment to have a project car. So make sure that you are willing to do that and understand like how long it's going to take for you to build this car, depending on what level of degradation it's in. Um, is going to basically kind of determine that timeline for you. Then the last thing as far as before you buy a project car, well not the last thing but one of the most important considerations is to understand like what your goal is. Are you looking to do a full restoration on a 90s import like my red Celica convertible? Are you wanting to start with something that's already running, driving, is in pretty decent condition and spend your money on aftermarket parts and modding and stuff like that? So have a goal in mind, understand what you're capable of, understand your budget. I think it's going to help you in finding a project car if you understand what your goals actually are for that car. 
Okay. You got the project car. You did your research. And you know what you want. You found the car. It's the perfect one. Now what? Make sure that you understand this. You are going to hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. Because every single time I've ever dug into either one of my cars, it has not gone right. <laughs> and things tend to seem like they are simpler than they are, especially when you get into a car and you think it's one thing, so you tear it apart and you go to fix it and then you realize, oh my gosh, there's five more things I have to fix. So, my Celica convertible, I call her Sakura. I bought her from a gentleman. I'll call him a gentleman, even though I don't think he was very gentlemanly. Sold me the car for 200 bucks, so not a huge loss there. But he told me. It only needed a starter and a battery to run and it was gonna be just fine. So I went and looked at this car and it was dark out, that was a mistake. Um, it looked like it had been rained in for a very long time. It smelled terribly of the neighborhood cat pee and for some reason I still decided to buy it. But I looked at the engine bay, kind of looked around, I checked the oil level, the oil level was good, but I didn't look inside the valve cover, I didn't do any of the due diligence that I should have done, looking at fluids, things like that. Bought the car anyway. Get it home, replace the starter, replace the battery, go to turn it over, the car has zero compression. Zero. So... I noticed that he had the timing belt cover off, and so I was like, oh, it looks like the timing belt's new. He probably just got the timing wrong. Replaced the pulleys, replaced the belt, the full shenanigans, went to start the car, zero compression. So I look in the engine, not promising. Basically, I got told it was one thing, replaced all those things, and the engine was blown. So obviously I got in way over my head on this first project thinking I was going to be able to put a couple hundred bucks into it, have a running car, and be able to have some fun in the summer. Um, not the case. Um, also understand like what your limit is with the car. Let's say you buy this car, you think it needs this, this, and this. Your goal is to just restore it to stock and you go and you lift the car up and you start doing things and you notice severe frame damage, severe rust damage, whatever it is that would be your like deal breaker. Keep those things in mind and be willing to cut your losses. So this is probably not a popular opinion with a lot of people who are into project cars, but there are just some things that are so extremely expensive to fix that you might be better off buying a different car. So if it's a super rare car and there's no way you're going to find another one and you really got your heart set on fixing it and it is fixable, then go for it. But just keep in mind that there could be some other options for you. Patience is a virtue and it's not the easiest thing when it comes to a project car. Understand that you're going to be spending more time working on your project car than you probably will be spending driving it. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of project cars. <laughs> um, with that, I mean, that's not going to be the case for everyone, but also keep in mind that when you are fixing things, you also need to be really patient because there's been a lot of times where I said, okay, it's going to be 30 minutes to an hour. I'm going to replace this clutch master cylinder, pop it back in. We're going to be good to go. Five hours later, stripped the clutch master cylinder and I had brake fluid spewing everywhere. So <laughs> another example of things taking way longer than they should. Of course, that was my own fault. Another thing, 
it is really easy to continue shopping for project cars <laughs> once you've bought one. And I recommend that you don't do this. Um, I have two now because I'm a sucker and I got told that this black car was going to the junkyard even though it still ran and I just couldn't let it go because I love me a fifth gen Zelica and I am a sucker. Now, originally I was thinking, okay, I can either take the parts off the convertible and put it in to the black car or vice versa because most of the stuff in these is pretty interchangeable. Then I ended up having both of them in front of me and going, I can't part either of these cars out. Like I love both of them. So now I have two project cars to fix, but what I'm doing is I'm focusing on finishing one, at least to the point where I can drive it and have some fun with it, and then I will continue working on the other one. And I also have to do that to stay within my budget. So I'd recommend that you stick with one project car. <laughs> okay, the next thing. You, if you're sharing this journey on social media, uh, with your friends in real life, Instagram, whatever it is, everyone's going to have an opinion about what you should be doing with your car. And you need to be comfortable with the fact that this is your car and you're going to build it the way that you want to build it. And it does get very difficult sometimes to have people go, why are you doing it this way? this would look better, or why do you want to do that? I think you should do this. And they will be suggesting things to you all day long. So you have to sometimes just smile and nod and say, yeah, that sounds really cool. And then be on your way. Because in the end, this is your car, it's your build, and you have to be happy with it. Another thing that um, you should keep in mind is is this going to be a car that you want to keep forever? Is this a car that you're going to want to keep for a couple of years? Are you just building a drift car to try it out? Um, are you wanting to restore something? If you want to keep resell value in your car, you have to keep in mind that if you do all this crazy customization that cannot be reversed, you're going to lose value on the car typically. So, if it's something that you want to have fun with for a couple years, treat it well and do your customizations, but hang on to your stock parts. Um, if you can do a wrap over paint, that's usually a good idea. If you have a stock color underneath, just tie that into your goals and think about how long you're actually going to keep this car. Um, this one might be the most important thing. And I'm sure you've all heard this. If you're going to buy a project car, don't have it be your only car. Because as I said, you're going to spend more time fixing it than you get driving it. And it's really stressful when you have a project and you're trying to daily it and it breaks down and then you have no car. And it's just not a good idea. <laughs> and it would be better if you took that money and put it towards a dependable car that you can daily and then later on be responsible and then you can have fun and buy the project car when you've got a nice daily. I have a little Scion TC. I'm not customizing it. I'm not doing anything to it. It's just my daily driver. I have fun driving it but these two are my project cars and I'm not stressed out that they're not running because I have that car. Don't daily your project cars. Don't do it. The last thing that I have on my tips for you is just the higher the demand for the car, the higher the price is going to be. And at least in the import world, the more popular it is, the more crap you're going to have to deal with when you buy one. Because everyone and their mother has tried to tune the heck out of it. So you've got interior parts missing, you've got spray paint, you have plasti dip, you have tint on your tail lights. Ask me how I know. Um, 
it's going to be harder and harder to find a clean example of the car that you want. So if you want something that hasn't been screwed around with, you're gonna have to be really patient when you're car shopping. So keep that in mind. And with that, um, those are my tips for you about uh, if you're gonna buy a project car, kind of some things you should expect. Um, it always ends up costing more and taking more time than you expected. I would love it if you would take a screenshot of this episode, tag me in it, let us know what you loved about this episode, what your biggest takeaway was. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Keep on keeping on. We are Miss Manual. I've been there.